Deep in the mid-Jurassic jungle is a hidden nest, and within the leaves and sand that make up the nest are 20 eggs. Now reaching the end of their incubation period, it is time for them to hatch. Pushing their way free of the eggs come the small, helpless chicks. No sooner has the first one let out a sound, a large figure appears over the top of the nest, bearing powerful claws and a robust skull full of razor-sharp teeth. The newly hatched chicks have nothing to fear from this colossus, however. This intimidating predator is their mother. The six-meter carnivore is a megaloceros, the top predator of this region. For a theropod, she has quite large and powerful arms, however, in this instant, she uses them to be gentle. Tentatively, she uses her claws to remove the outer layer of the foliage so that she can properly see the infants, most of which are still breaking out of their eggs. Now with nothing in her way, the female lowers her head into the nest and carefully picks up her offspring in her mouth. She grabs ten of them. Some of them have their heads and tails dangling from between her teeth. She then begins to move away from the nest, as the smell of cracked eggs will no doubt draw predators. She walks for a few minutes before reaching a clearing, but this is not a natural formation. During her time watching over the nest, the only time she ever left her station was to clear this area of debris and create a low border wall of leaves, branches, and dirt. In doing so, she has created a nursery for her to put her young in. The circular area is 3 meters wide, and the wall is only 30 centimeters high at most. So while it won't stop most predators, it will stop the hatchlings from wandering off too far. Placing her head into the closed area, she releases her young into the new residence, and then returns to the nest to retrieve the rest of them. Soon enough, all the hatchlings are safe and secure, and are beginning to find the strength in their legs. The mother checks the perimeter, and then promptly leaves. She has been fasting for the entirety of the egg's incubation, and now she needs to find food, not just for herself, but for her eager offspring. When their mother is gone, the young instinctively lay still, not wanting to draw attention. Beyond their border walls are the sounds of all manner of creatures, many easily capable of consuming a few infant megalosaurus. They may have to wait for days, hoping their small amount of shelter is enough to hide them, and that their mother will return at all. They only have to wait till that night, however, when the mother returns with a large fish in her jaws. She found it by a river, and though she could have eaten the whole thing by herself, she saved most of it for her now very hungry brood. This is certainly an unusual first meal, but the young eagerly dig in as soon as the odd smelly meat lands within their nursery. The mother will wait till the young have eaten their fill before disposing of whatever is left, and then returning to look for more food. This level of care that she shows for her young is not uncommon for carnivorous dinosaurs, and is one reason theropods were so successful. However, as caring and as vigilant as she is, she can't protect them forever and it is likely that only one or two of these youngsters will survive till adulthood. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the first dinosaur ever named, Megaloceros. Megaloceros Bucklandi was originally discovered in 1824, and was the first non-avian dinosaur to be named, in 1842, Sir Richard Owen put Megaloceros and two other species under the new clade of Dinosauria, and so the first research into dinosaurs really began. Now, some dinosaur fossils had been discovered previously, however, these were often seen to be the bones of giants or dragons. It's also notable that back then, scientists really had no idea what these animals looked like, and viewed them as large, frog-like lizards. The first dinosaur models for the Crystal Palace dinosaurs look like uh, this. Yikes. Now there is a lot more history to early dinosaur research, 
However, we'd be here all day, and this channel is more about the animal itself, and not so much about the discovery and old, out-of-date research of the animal. It is certainly a pretty interesting story, however. Now that it's been almost two centuries since Megaloceros was first discovered, what do we know about it? Well, despite it being the first named dinosaur and multiple individuals found, we don't have anywhere near a full skeleton. However, there is enough to distinguish it from other theropods. Megaloceros lived in the mid-Jurassic period, around 166 million years ago, in what is now southern England. Modern estimates put it at 6 metres long, 3 metres tall, and weighing in around 700 kilograms. Some previous estimates put it at 9 metres long and 1 tonne. It has a typical theropod build, with a strong, stiff tail and a robust body. The forelimbs were slightly larger than average, with three long claws that may have been used when attacking prey, either to slash or hold them in place. The skull was quite large for its body size as well, and the teeth it had in them were larger than normal. Its skeleton was highly ossified, meaning it was a robust and muscular animal, making it a powerful predator, likely the apex predator of its region, hunting the stegosaurs and sauropods it lived alongside and reaching speeds up to 32 kilometers per hour. In the time it lived, much of Europe was covered by shallow seas, so it's likely that Megaloceros was active around coastal regions. It could have scavenged along beaches, or even hunted marine reptiles that had come ashore to rest. Some creatures it lived alongside include Streptospondylus, Cetiosaurus, and Ranfarhynchus. I find it rather ironic that we know so little about the first named dinosaur, and because of the incompleteness of the remains, Megaloceros is sort of looked at like a standard template or completely normal looking theropod. But when they were alive, Megaloceros would have been one of the largest predators on the planet, a powerfully built hunter that adapted to multiple different biomes. It is also one of the best examples to show how much our view of dinosaurs has changed, from frog-like lizards to slow, cold-blooded monsters to the modern take. But what do you think of Megaloceros? Should it get more attention, or do you think that the title of first name dinosaur is enough for this species? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to cover in a future episode, and until then, thank you for watching. Alright, just not as a random, completely unscripted rant. Do you know how hard it is to find any info on this animal? It was all just recounting the facts of how it was discovered and that it was a throwaway taxa and everything and everyone put bones in that taxa and just tell me about the animal. Bloody hell, how hard is it? <laughs>